Hello to all at home. You're watching ITTV. So do you still remember your previous lesson? It was all about the science laboratory. Today we begin a new lesson. What is it? It is Steps in Scientific Investigation. So, how can you define scientific study? Scientific study has got two main points. It is scientific process and scientific results. You carry out an experiment, then you get the results of the experiment. As simple as that. So, firstly, let's have a look further at the graphic. Scientific process is the method used by the scientists to conduct scientific investigation. The method used is called scientific method. Through systemic investigation, scientists can acquire scientific knowledge. Scientific results are obtained by scientific process. Now you came by so many words which is scientific results, scientific knowledge, scientific process, scientific method. Let us learn what is scientific method all about. A scientific method can be conducted in the following order. Firstly, you have got a hypothesis. Now what's a hypothesis? Hypothesis is something that can be investigated or tested. That is hypothesis. Now the main aim of an experiment is to prove whether the hypothesis is correct or it is not valid. So firstly, we have hypothesis, then we carry out the experiment. Later, after the experiment, we would get data or results. Then, you actually compile all your findings into a conclusion. This is a scientific method. Let's see the scientific method further in this diagram. The scientific method. Firstly, you have to ask a question. Next, do background research. Obviously, when you have something of a curiosity, you have to do background research. Why are you curious regarding something? Next is construct a hypothesis. Let's say cockroaches need oxygen to breathe. This is a hypothesis. At the end of the experiment, you have to prove that yes, cockroaches need oxygen to breathe. Then that's a valid hypothesis. Let's see further what is there in the scientific method. After constructing a hypothesis, you have to test your hypothesis by doing an experiment. After the experiment, what do you get? Obviously, results. Analyze your data and draw a conclusion. And lastly, report your results. Was your hypothesis correct? So at the end of an experiment, you have to answer, was the hypothesis valid or not? This is how you carry out scientific method. Now let's see, how do you actually carry out an experiment? And let's see the scientific method much more in detail. Firstly, you identify the problem. Next, you form a hypothesis. Then you plan the experiment to test the hypothesis. So while you're planning the experiment, you have to make sure you use the correct material, the correct apparatus and the right procedures to carry out this experiment. You also have to decide how you're going to collect the data which you get after you do the experiment. Next, you have to have control of the variables. Firstly, you have responding variable. Next, you have manipulated variable. And lastly, you have constant variable. Now, constant variable is something that does not change. Responding variable is something that you get the results of the experiment. And lastly, the manipulated variable is something that you change. Let's say you change the length or you change the presence and absence of oxygen for the cockroach. So these are variables. Remember them. Responding variable, manipulated variable and lastly constant variable. You have to decide the correct variable for the experiment. Next is collecting the data. You can either have qualitative data which is descriptive observation or quantitative data which is numbers and figures. After you get the data or collect the data, what do you actually do to them? You analyze them and interpret the data. 
How do you do it? You find a pattern and find a meaning for the observation. Now, obviously, when you carry out an experiment, you have to know the meaning of the results. Next is drawing a conclusion. You decide validity of hypothesis. When you draw the conclusion, decide whether the hypothesis is true or not, which you actually created at the beginning of the experiment. Writing the report. Now, this is the last part of the experiment. How do you actually write the report? By using charts, graphs, tables and drawings. So, this is the main method that you actually use while you carry out a scientific method. So, what you should actually do? Remember to create a hypothesis at the beginning of the experiment. At the end of the experiment, answer the hypothesis. Is it valid or not? This is how you carry out the experiment. Let's move over to the section of Do You Know to see a few scientific facts. Ten minutes of one hurricane contains enough energy to match the nuclear stockpiles of the world. That is how strong a hurricane can be. This is an example of picture showing you the results of hurricane. Due to gravitational effects, you weigh slightly less when the moon is directly overhead. Now try it if you ever get a chance to stand right below the shining moon. Try weighing yourself. You would weigh a little bit lesser. If you could drive to the sun at 55 miles per hour, it would take about 193 years. Now this is how far the sun is actually located away from the earth. 193 years driving 55 miles per hour. A bolt of lightning is about 54,000 Fahrenheit, 30,000 degrees Celsius, six times hotter than the sun. Just imagine if you get struck by a lightning that is so dangerous, you might even burn to that or just die. The human brain is 80% water. Most people blink about 17,000 times a day. Now, did you realize that, students? You don't realize while you're blinking, but you're blinking 17,000 times a day. That is a lot, don't you think so? And remember that the human brain is 80% water. Elephants have been known to remain standing after they die. Now, I'm sure that most of you would not have an idea of this. Elephants die standing. And lastly, 2020 vision means the eye can see normally at 20 feet. 2015 is better. The eye can see at 20 feet what another eye sees at 15 feet. Now, this is all about vision. So, when you go to check your eyes and the doctor actually tells you that you have a 2020 vision, that means you have a perfect vision. So, this was about the Do You Know segment. You learned a few science facts for the days. Go to your friends and share them. So, let's move over to the experiment of the day to see further how do you actually conduct an experiment, how you decide the variables and so on. The experiment that we are going to carry out today is something to do with length, time and the pendulum. What is the pendulum? Let's see the experiment. Investigating the length of pendulum and period of oscillation. Now I have prepared a diagram here for you to show you what is actually a pendulum and how do you carry out the experiment. Now let's have a look firstly at the picture here. Now this is a wooden block and we have a retort stand here. Do you still remember using the lab apparatus, you learned about the retort stand. The retort stand is a place where you hold something. Now here, it is holding a string with a pendulum at the end. So this is called a pendulum. So let's see what is the experiment all about. The problem of the experiment is, how does the length of pendulum affect the period of oscillation? So, here we are going to keep changing the length of the string. The hypothesis is, the longer the length of pendulum, the longer the period of oscillation. So, this is the hypothesis that we are going to test the validity at the end of the experiment. Is it true? The longer the length, the longer the time needed for the pendulum. Let's see. 
The constant variable, which is the variable that stays static and does not move, is the weight of the pendulum. We use the same weight of the pendulum. The manipulated variable is the length of the pendulum. Now, each experiment that we carry out, we are going to change the length of the string. Let's see the next variable. The responding variable is the period of oscillation. Now, you might be wondering, what is the oscillation? An oscillation is actually when the pendulum moves from R to S and back to R again. This is one oscillation. Let me tell you again from R to S and back to R again, one oscillation. Now, what are the materials and apparatus needed for this experiment? String, cork, wooden block, retort stand with clamp and stopwatch. Now, this is the cork placed right here and the string hangs from it and this whole thing here is known as the pendulum. What are the procedures that you have to carry out to do this experiment? It is quite simple. Let's see the first one. A simple pendulum is made in length of 20 centimeters. The time taken for pendulum to make 20 oscillation is taken. Repeat experiment using pendulum with length 40 centimeters, 60 centimeters, 80 centimeters, and 100 centimeters. So remember to carry out this experiment, you have to keep changing the length of the pendulum, which is the string. Record results in a table and draw graph of time taken against length. So this is basically the procedure for this experiment. So what would you actually observe at the end of the experiment? Let's have a look at this table firstly. Length of pendulum when it's 20 centimeters, the time taken is 15 and time taken for one oscillation is 0.75. Let's see further for different length and how much is the time taken for 20 oscillation and for one oscillation. Now, as you can see in this table, when the length actually increases, the time taken for oscillation also increases and the time taken for one oscillation also increases. Let's have a look at the diagram once again. So we keep on changing the length of pendulum and the period of oscillation also increases. So what I mean to say here in this experiment according to the results in the table is the longer the length of pendulum, the longer the period of oscillation. So this was the hypothesis in the beginning. So what is the experiment? Is it valid or not the hypothesis? It's valid, of course, so the hypothesis is true. So this is how you basically carry out an experiment. Remember the variables, the goal, the materials, and so on. Question 1. What is a hypothesis? Now, the aim when you know what is the hypothesis is to find out whether the hypothesis is valid or not at the end of the experiment. You can carry out various type of experiments by just having one hypothesis. So let's have a look at what is the definition of hypothesis firstly. The answer is the hypothesis is something that can be tested using an investigation. So as I said in the beginning of the lesson, you would want to test that whether the cockroach needs oxygen to survive or water or food to survive. So what is your hypothesis? Cockroach needs oxygen to survive. This is the hypothesis or you can also use cockroach needs water to survive. After you carry out the experiment, which is by having water or air, you decide whether the cockroach leaves or not. So if the cockroach dies without water or oxygen, then the hypothesis is actually valid because you said in the beginning that cockroach needs water or air to survive. This is hypothesis. So always remember to know the validity of the hypothesis at the end of the experiment. Let's move over to question 2. Question 2. Below are the types of variable available except A. Responding B. Manipulated C. Supportive D. Constant So what is the correct answer? There's only three different types of variable present when you carry out an experiment. Let's see the correct answer first. Then we will discuss further regarding this question. 
the correct answer is C, supportive. Now there is no variable called the supportive variable. So what is the manipulated variable? Something that you change. Now let's have a look at the experiment that you did before this. The changing one, the manipulated variable, is the length of the pendulum. You use 20 cm. 40 cm, 60 cm, 80 cm and 100 cm. That is the manipulated variable, something you can change. What about the responding variable? Something that responds. Now in the experiment before, it was what? It was the period of oscillation. When you change the length, the manipulated variable, you see how the period of oscillation, the time taken, actually changes. So lastly, we have got the constant variable. Let's take the experiment once again as an example. The constant variable here is the weight of the pendulum, obviously. So these are the variables present. Remember once again, responding, manipulated, and lastly, constant. What about question three? Question three, below are examples of ways to compile data except A, graph, B, chart, C, tables, and D, letter. So what do you think is the correct answer? Is letter a way to compile data? Are graphs ways to compile data? Which is the correct answer here? It's D, letter. Letter is not a way to compile data, while graph, charts and tables are ways how you can compile data when you carry out an experiment. Question 4. What is a scientific process? Now, what actually happens when you carry out a scientific process? Let's recall, scientific study actually involves scientific process and scientific results. Now, the results are the ones that you get at the end of the experiment. What about the process? Is the whole thing that you carry out during the experiment. So, what is the correct definition of scientific process? The answer is, scientific process is the method used by the scientist to conduct scientific investigation. Now, this is where all the ways to conduct experiment is included in, like identifying the problem, knowing the hypothesis, identifying the variables, collecting data, and so on. So, this is basically all you need to know about today's lesson. Let's move over to the summary of the day to quickly recap the lesson. Scientific study has scientific process and scientific results. So the main aim or the main points that you have to remember when you think about scientific study is scientific process and scientific results. Two main points. Scientific process is the method used by the scientists to conduct scientific investigation. The method used is called scientific method. Through systemic investigation, scientists can acquire scientific knowledge. Scientific results are obtained by scientific process. So what are the scientific method? Hypothesis followed by the procedures which is the experiment, then the data or the results collected and lastly conclusion. So this was the summary for today. This is the end of the lesson, students. So I hope that you could remember everything quite well in today's steps of scientific investigation. Well, that's the end of the lesson, students. Till I see you again in our next lesson. Take care. Thank you for watching ITTV and have fun learning.